Math 31, welcome to example six. This is gonna be the first time that we're gonna solve a logarithmic equation together. And I wanna talk about the two different types of logarithmic equations you're gonna get. You're gonna get types of equations where there's a logarithm on one side of the equation And then you're going to see logarithmic equations where there are logarithms on both sides of the equation. And we're gonna solve both types of these logarithmic equations. It's just that they have different techniques involved. So we wanna solve each equation give exact values, meaning I don't want decimal approximations, I want the exact value. But just take note of what we have. All right, I think you'll give me in 6a, there's a log on one side of the equation and not the other. And the same is holding true for example 6b, there's a log on one side of the equation but not the other. So when that's the case, there is a certain technique for solving those equations. And it is distinctly different then how we solve logarithmic equations where there are logs on both sides. All right, so the first thing we have to do is isolate the logarithmic expression. In the same way that we would have um, isolated the exponential expression when we had exponential equations, we want to isolate this. Now, the e equation in 6b, it's already isolated. There's nothing else except this logarithmic term on the left side of the equation. But if you look in 6a, there's a 4 here and it's getting multiplied. So what I need to do first, before I try and do anything else, is I wanna divide by four, and I get ln of x equaling 30, not 36, whoo, I can divide by four, it's equal to nine, okay? So the technique here, when you have a logarithm on one side of the equation, is translate your logarithmic equation into the equivalent exponential equation. So let me go ahead and just highlight that here, right? Translate, or I should say transform logarithmic equation into the equivalent exponential equation. and solve that equation. So let me go ahead and again just bubble this over here. But that's the technique when you have a logarithm on just one side of the equation, isolate it first and foremost. And if it is, if it comes already isolated, great. And if it doesn't, isolate it and then transform it into the equivalent exponential equation. So let's practice this one. This is technically, because it's ln, this is log base e of x equaling nine. So here's my logarithmic expression, excuse me, logarithmic equation. Let's translate it into the equivalent exponential equation. All right, so we know that the base of our logarithm is always gonna be the base of our power, right? We know the logarithm is equal to the exponent, so this will be the nine up here, and that will make my argument x. All right, now I'm gonna erase all my circles because it's a little busy there. But I have that e to the ninth is equal to x. Or we, I talked about it before, I call it the circle equation. I always start here and I go e to the ninth is equal to x. And that's my answer, I've, I've solved for x. All right, so my solution here, it pops out. It's equal to e to the ninth, and that is the exact value. It's not a decimal approximation, that's my answer. e to the ninth, four times ln of e to the ninth is 36, and let's take a look at this. Four times ln of e to the ninth is equal to 36. That's because the ln and the e cancel out, the only thing that survives is the exponent, and four times nine is equal to 36. All right, so our mechanics here, isolate the logarithmic, expression, if it's not already isolated, transform that logarithmic equation into its equivalent exponential equation and solve the exponential equation. All right, so let's try it over here. This logarithmic expression, it's isolated. 
So I want to take this log and write it as an exponential equation. All right. So let's think about this. The base of your logarithm will be the base of your exponent. Excuse me, the base of your power. All right. The logarithm is equal to the exponent, so the exponent will then be 1, and that leaves this as x cubed minus 5. All right, now again, I'm going to erase my circles, and I'm going to write this a little bit better. I also could have done my circle equation starting at 3 and saying 3 to the 1 is equal to x cubed minus 5. All right. Now, at this point, I don't have a logarithmic equation anymore. I have a cubic equation. So let's, let's take a look. I'm going to write my variable on the left side of the equation. So I'll write x cubed minus 5 is equal to 3. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And I'm going to get x cubed is equal to 8. And so you have a couple of options. You could take the cube root of both sides, right? So let me do it this way. I could say the cube root of x cubed is equal to the cube root of 8 and get x is equal to 2, right? Or, here I'll do it this way also, if I had x cubed equaling 8, I could raise both sides of that equation to the 1 3rd power, All right? and 8 to the 1 3rd is equal to 2. And remember, if we have a power raised to a power, we multiply the exponents. So either way, I'm getting x equaling 2. And we can just check this. Let's do it in our heads to check it. This is saying log base 3 of, okay, we had 2 cubed minus 5, is that equal to 1? Well, this is log base 3. All right, 2 cubed is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. Is it true that log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1? It sure is, because when the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, the only thing that survives is that exponent. All right, so when you have a log on just one side of the equation, these are the mechanics. Isolate your logarithmic term, and then transform it into the equivalent exponential equation, all right, either using that circle equation or just piecing it together on your own, and then solve that remaining equation. All right, so we're going to flip to example seven, and then I'm going to show you the mechanics of what do you do when you have a log on both sides of the equation. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.